Hey guys, it's Mr. Ray here. Uh, we're going to do another lesson tonight on, uh, or today, on our, to our new topic of trigonometry. So if you remember the first lesson, we looked at similar triangles. We learned how to prove if two triangles are similar. And if you, if you want a quick way of thinking about similar triangles, it's basically triangles that have the same exact same shape but have different uh, sizes, and that means their sides are different, but their sides are uh, similar triangles. Uh, you could multiply one, uh, one triangle side by a number, uh, the same number for all three sides, and the new triangle that you create will be similar. It'll have the exact same shape, same angles, but uh, the ratio of the sides will be the same, but the side lengths will be different, okay? Um, so um, we're going to continue with a new topic, and basically we're, we're going to be sticking, we're going to be growing this topic for the rest of the unit into other topics. Um, this is sort of related to similar triangles. I'll point that out as we as we go through it. Uh, but if you go back to the name of the unit, trigonometry, remember we said that that was uh, the study of the measurement of triangles, and that really comes down to measuring the three sides and the three angles. So we're going to be looking at some new tools to determine uh, sides and angles. And these ones are pretty cool. Uh, you're going to be using these in grade 11 and grade 12 and onwards. Um, similar triangles, it's kind of a, you know, it's a topic that we will use a little bit, but not nearly as much as what's what's the coming in the rest of this unit, okay? So um, this lesson is called tangent ratio, which you'll find out why we're calling it that. But um, I just want to point out that uh, when we're working on this lesson and the next couple of lessons after this, uh, we'll, we're working with triangles that are just only right triangles. So triangles that have a right angle. Okay, and then we finish the unit up where we look at other triangles as well, but right triangles have a special relationship, as you as you know, based on Pythagorean theorem, and the sides are related that way. So, okay, um, let's start this off with a with an example. It might it might be a little dated by now. Uh, Tony Hawk, who is uh, the god of skateboarding, it's probably probably getting up in age now, but I think he's still involved in the sport. So um, uh, he's uh, designing various sizes of skateboard ramps and they must have the same slope or the same incline. Okay. And says that each ramp must have a slope of 0.5 or one half. And uh, what we want to do is come up with some different size ramps uh, that have the same slope. Okay, so we're not doing these slopes on an XY grid. We're just doing kind of um, ramps that you could draw triangles for. So the, the important thing here is at the end here, remember that slope is rise over run. So um, what that means is um, each of these different ramps must have a rise over run equal to 1 over 2 or reducing to 1 over 2. So I'm going to I'm going to start off simple and I'm going to build a triangle. It's going to be a right triangle. So there's that's basically the ramp. So if I'm looking at this as a triangle, the rise would be this part here and the run would be the horizontal part. So if it says that the slope must be 1 half, that means I could say well the if the run, if the rise was 1 and the run was 2, that's a slope of that's a slope of one half. So there's the first. Now I didn't put any units, but I guess I could say, you know, one meter and two meters. Um, for now, if I wanted another uh, ramp with the same incline, the same slope, I still have to, you know, I still have to adhere to this rule here about um, rise over run. I'll put that out here. Is equal to one half. But I could make that ratio, uh, I could use different numbers here that can reduce to one half. 
So maybe I make it uh, twice as big, make it uh, two, two over four. So this probably isn't exactly the same, um, the same incline, but uh, just pretend it is. So in this case, I could say, well, here's another wrap. So this time, if we made it, the, the rise will run two over four. That means the rise is two and the run is four meters, meters. So that would still have the same slope of one half, the same incline. And then you, I could, you know, just extend that, make it uh, like three over six. So a rise of three, a run of six, uh, and then units, of course. Uh, so all three of these ramps have the same slope or incline. Um, just, just, and if you think about similar triangles, this is where it comes in. All these three triangles would be similar. Uh, their side lengths are, are have the same ratios. Okay, um, multiply this by two, and I get this. Multiply this by three, and I get this. The angles are all the same. Okay. Um, so that's the that's a kind of connection into similar triangles, but we're going to go a little farther with this. Um, so, in like we've already said, slope and, and the angles must be the same for all ramps or triangles, whatever you want to call these. Um, and like I already said, these angles are all the same. That angle, these three angles are the same. These three are all ninety, and the top angles will also be the same. Similar triangles. Okay, now I have to do a little thing on names now uh, because we're going to get into naming the sides. So that's really important. So here's a here's a right triangle. I'll try to make it a little more clear. It's not very uh, very dark. Um, so if I have a right triangle, we've already got a name for the opposite uh, opposite the 90 degree angled and we call that the hypotenuse. So I'll just give that a big H for hypotenuse. Okay, so that's nothing new, but we're going to use that name hypotenuse. And the other two sides, before we name them, we actually have to uh, determine what, what our reference angle is because we've got two reference angles that are possible. We never use the 90 degrees as reference. It's always one of the other two. So for example, in this case, there's a little symbol down here. I'm just going to make it bigger. And you'll learn about this in a few minutes. Uh, this is actually uh, a symbol in the Greek alphabet called theta, T-H-E-T-A. And we use that in maths for unknown angles all the time. So you'll see that over and over again. Um, nothing. There's nothing that says we can't use another letter like X or Y or uh, anything you want, but theta is kind of reserved for angles. It's got a special meaning. So if I decided that this angle down here is our reference angle, and I could have arbitrarily said it was this one, but if I if I pick this angle, then th my next side I'm going to look across the opposite where the angle is, and I'm, that's going to be called the opposite opposite side, and then the third side opposite obviously because it's opposite the angle and the third side is called adjacent um, a d j a c n t um, and if you think what ad adjacent means it's next to if somebody sits adjacent to someone else they're sitting next to them so this side is next to the angle okay it actually touch makes up the angle um, so does the hypotenuse but the hypotenuse has a special it it never changes, right? Adjacent will be the side that uh, makes up the angle with the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, whenever you're naming sides, we can name this one right away. This one seems to be the next obvious one, and then by default, the last one would be a. Okay. Um, now, if you think about it, um, if I'm looking at this the way I was looking at these skateboard ramps, okay. Uh, up till now, we've been calling these sides, you know, if we thought of these as sides, this is the this is the rise and this is the run. So this would also sort of be the rise and this would be the run, but now we're giving it new names. So instead of looking at, um, look, instead of calling it rise over run, we're going to call it opposite over adjacent, okay? 
and that's uh, that's what I've said down here. It's, so the ratio of the opposite divided by the adjacent side uh, will be the slope angle. Um, it's kind of like the new version of rise over run. Okay, and we have a special name for this um, opposite over adjacent ratio. We call it the tangent ratio. Okay, and we're going to shorten that to tan all the time. All right, so you're going to see um, we're actually going to use our calculator. We're going to use that tan button that's been on your calculator all these years, and maybe you didn't know what it was for, but today we're going to use it. And we're going to use it to determine things like unknown sides and angles. So that's pretty cool. Um, so on this example, I've got uh, these three points here, AB, triangle ABC. I've got my right angle here, which has to be true for this lesson. It has to be a right angle triangle. And I've got the sides of 6, 8, and 10. Um, we want to know the tangent ratios for the angles A and B. So the way we're going to do that is to let everybody know it's the tangent ratio, we start off with TAN, short for tangent. And we also have to tell well which angle is are we using the tangent ratio from because it, as we saw before, it makes a difference. Um, maybe I'll just go back to this for a second. So if like I arbitrarily decided in this case that that's going to be the angle we're looking at. Um, um, so I called this opposite and this adjacent. <clears throat> if I decided instead, maybe I want to pick this angle instead, well that would change, that would switch the opposite and adjacent sides because now if I pick this angle, this side is now my opposite side because it's across from the angle and by default that becomes adjacent because now it's next to the angle. So Hypotenuse never changes, it's always where it is, uh, but opposite and adjacent will flip-flop depending on which of the two reference angles you're going to choose, and remember you never use the 90 degrees as your reference angle. Um, the reason why we never use 90 as our reference angle is what side would I call opposite? Because that's going to be hypotenuse, so that's normally where I, you know, when I pick the angle, the opposite side is normally called opposite, so now I have a problem. Um, so that's why we never use the 90 degree as a reference angle, just other two angles. Okay, so back to this question here. Uh, we want the tangent ratios for angles A and B, so I have to specify which angle I'm taking the ratio for. So I'm going to start off with A. So we always say tan A. So now, um, if I'm so tan A, that's going to be, I'll just, I'll just do this in three letters, opposite over adjacent. Okay, now when I'm looking from the perspective of A, okay, the opposite side is 6, the adjacent side is 8, so that's going to be 6 over 8, which is uh, 3 quarters or 0 0.75. Okay, and if I looked at uh, the tangent ratio from for B, angle B, okay, now the opposite side becomes 8, and the adjacent side is 6. So opposite over adjacent is 8 over 6. So it flip-flops, like you see there, but it has a big change on this. It's 1 point. On this one, we actually have to round it, right? 1.33, whatever. Um, so sometimes it's better just to leave it as a fraction. Um, and remember, tan, uh, the tangent ratio represents the slope, rise over run. So you could basically say the slope of this line is uh, 3 quarters or 0.75. And if you looked at it from this perspective, the slope of this angle, that's 1.33, which makes sense. This is steeper than angle A. So angle B is going to be bigger. You can tell that just by looking at it. Okay, now we're going to start using to get interesting, um, more interesting information about the triangle, including the sides and the angles. Okay, so find the value of x to the nearest tenth. Uh, they've given us the actual angle here. 
and they've given us one of the two sides and of course there's our 90 degrees there. Um, so uh, what we're going to do, we have to pick, and we're going to use the tangent ratio for this. Uh, now we don't really have to call this angle A anymore, or B or whatever. This angle is 32 degrees, that's given to us. So instead of calling it a name for the angle, we're just going to call it by the actual angle. So this is tan 32 degrees is equal to, so from that perspective of, of that angle, uh, opposite would be x and adjacent, maybe I'll just go write the numbers this time. So opposite is the unknown, so it's x and adjacent is 10. So what we're going to do now is solve for x. And you're thinking, well, how do I do that? Well, the first thing we can do, we can isolate x. To get x by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. I multiply this by 10, it's gone. The 10 is gone. And if I multiply this by 10, it becomes, you write it as 10, 10, 32 degrees. Now, it's kind of important that you the number part that you're multiplying this by goes in front. So the 10, the 10 went in front of the 10. Um, if I'd written it as 10, 32 times 10, uh, you might think, well, am I multiplying the angle of 32 degrees by 10? But, um, and that's, valid, that's a valid question, but you're not multiplying the angle, you're multiplying the ratio. So the, the number you multiply, this is, think of this as like, glued together, right? So if you're multiplying by something in front, it multiplies with this number. Now, here comes, you can get your calculators out. Okay, um, so uh, you can see here I've got this tan button. Okay, now one thing you have to do, um, one th thing about angles you're going to find out is there's different um, different units we can use for angles. And I know that's probably a surprise because we, uh, you know, up till now we've only measured angles and degrees and that's mostly going to be true. But there's, there's a, another, there's another unit we use in grade 12 and that's called radians. And if you notice down here, I've got a button here, uh, rad, um, that stands for radians. If I push that, um, and everyone's calculator is going to be different. You can see like an, a rad at the top or an R. Okay. Now if I press it again, you can see that button changed to DEG for degrees. So it kind of toggles back and forth. You want to make sure you're on degrees. Okay. Now mine doesn't show DEG or D up here, but most calculators will have that. Um, so it's very important to use that. It's kind of the difference between, you know, measuring temperature and Celsius and Fahrenheit. You know, it's um, the temperature feels the same, but it's but it's uh, just using different units. Okay, so make sure you're doing that; otherwise, the calculation is way off, and you'll get frustrated for sure. So, so what we're going to do here? Let me move this up so I can get the calculator. Okay, so to do this whole thing now. Everyone's calculators are different. So if I want to take tan, find out what tan 32 is, um, for me, I press 32, so I put the degree, and then the tan button, and then I get this long decimal. Um, so we're not, we're not going to round and then continue on. So that's, the, that's what tan 32 is, and now we multiply that, which is this number here, by 10, so times 10 equals, and that's 6.24, and of course we're going to, it says here round to the nearest tenth, so that means it's going to either be 6.2 or 6.3, depending on the next digit, and that isn't big enough, it should be 5 or more to round up, so that's going to be 6.2, and I guess there's no units on the 10, so I'll just, I can just call it units. So we know that if that's a 32 degree triangle and that side is 10, well, that, that's going to make that side 6.2. Okay, so we've figured out our first trig um, calculation. 
to find an unknown side length using using one of these new buttons on the calculator. Okay, so let's try another question. Um, so more of the same, really. Find the value of x to the nearest tenth. Same as before. This time, I've got two sides here. I've got a third side. Um, and I'm trying to find out what that side is. And I know this angle is 46. Now, I think when I made this question, I wasn't being overly accurate. So one of the ways that you could actually solve for x is to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and normally that would work just as well, but um, I don't think I, I think my measurements were a bit off here. So normally you could do it using trig, or you could use it, uh, use the Pythagorean theorem and get the exact, the exact same answer. But in this case, it doesn't quite work out that way. So if you try it and it doesn't work, that, that was my issue, not yours. Okay, so um, now, we look at the angles we've got here. I don't know this angle, but I know this angle. So that's our reference angle. Remember, we never use 90. So if I'm naming these sides, well, this is opposite. This is hypotenuse. This is adjacent. Okay. Now, if I want to know, um, if I want to get that angle, I definitely have to include uh, the opposite side. And I, you know, I could either use this or this side, but we haven't, all we know now is this tan ratio. So I'm going to start writing my formula. So the tan of 46 degrees is equal to opposite. So that's x over adjacent, which is 16. Okay, so this looks a lot like what we just did before. We're going to multiply both sides by 16. I'm going to flip the sides around. So it's going to be x equals 16 tan 46. A lot, of, a lot of times after, you know, if you forget the degree sign, no big deal. But uh, I think it's a good habit to, to start off so you realize, oh, that's, the, that's an angle there and not like a side length or something. So back to our calculator. So this time we're going to do, make sure we're on degrees, 46 tan. Uh, now, on a lot of your calculators, it'll be opposite. You'll press the tan button and then 46 and then equals. Okay, so you, you'll have to figure that out on your own. Um, but usually the better calculators are the ones where you would put the tan first. Okay, so that number here, 1.03, um, that is tan 46. And now I'm going to multiply that by 16. And I get 16.56. And this is again rounded to the nearest tenth. So the tenth would be the five. 5, so it either stays at 5 or goes to 6. In this case, it does jump up because the number to the right is 5 or higher. So it's going to be 16.6 units. Okay, and one thing you can always do, you, you know from Pythagorean theorem that uh, the hypotenuse is always the biggest side, right? So if you see what the hypotenuse is, um, and then you, you calculate, you know, the other side here to be 16.6. Well, that seems reasonable. It looks like it's about half of that. Uh, but if you got a number like uh, 42, well, you should know that it can't be higher than the hypotenuse. So if you got something way off like that, hopefully you'll stop, see what you did wrong. Maybe you're on radians. Maybe, maybe you did something wrong here. Um, now the other thing I want to point out too is you notice I didn't I didn't do any rounding until I got to the very end. So I that that number we got when we did tan 46, I didn't write it down. I just kept on going and multiplied by 16 and then rounded at that point, okay? So that's your your goal in math should be if possible only round your answer at the end. Otherwise, the more you round the less accurate it will be. Okay? Uh, one more similar type question. So this time we've got an angle of 50 in this corner. We've got a side of 8 here and uh, value of x. That's the side we want to find out. So I'm going to use tan. So if I'm looking from that perspective, that's the opposite. 
and that's the adjacent. So tan of 50 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, 8 over x. Okay, now you have to be careful with this because uh, it's not like the ones we just did. Let me show you that. So the, the other ones we did had the x on the top of the ratio. Um, and all we had to do was multiply both sides by the number on the bottom. Well, I can't do the same thing here. I can't multiply both sides by 8 um, to get x by itself. If I multiply this by 8, I get 64 over x. So there's a couple ways you can do this. I, the way that I think works best is we're going to multiply both sides by x, which is something we don't usually do, but in this case it's going to work. So if I multiply if I multiply this side by x, it ends up canceling the x on the bottom, so I just get 8. If I multiply this by x, I just put an x, I multiply tan 50 by x like that. And remember the tan 50 is glued together, it's not two separate things, this is a number. Uh, that we'll figure out in a second. So if I want x by itself now, I want to get rid of the tan 50. So right now x is multiplying with tan 50, so we're going to divide both sides by tan 50. I'm going to get x equals 8 over tan 50. So this one's different than before because we weren't dividing by the, the tan calculation before. So let's, you have to be a little careful with this one. Everyone's calculators are different, so sometimes you're going to have to put brackets. Let's get my calculator going here. All right, so in this case, I'm going to do. So for my calculator, I don't need brackets, but sometimes you will. Okay, uh, so it's going to be eight divided by, and I'm going to press uh, fifty tan. There's tan. Now that's not the answer there. That's tan 50 right there. So I have to press equals and then I get the final answer 6.7 because I don't round up. So 6.7 units again. Um, and does that make sense? 6.7. Yeah, it's well, it, the, the ratio might be off a bit there, but it seems reasonable. It's not, it's not like I got. Uh, 45 units or one unit, it seems to be in the same uh, ballpark. So that, that seems right. All right, and now we get on to the last little topic, and this is, this is where things get really cool. Um, the, the last three examples, uh, we're finding uh, unknown sides. So how does it work to get an unknown angle? Okay, well, we're still going to set it up the same way. Uh, we're going to do a tan equation, and we're actually going to do something called, if we read this, uh, finding the unknown angle is done by using the inverse tan function. Okay, so, and that's what it's actually called, the inverse tan or tan inverse. Um, this is commonly known as, now when you see it written, it's kind of weird the way they do it. It's tan and it's got a little superscript like an exponent with a negative one there. Okay, That doesn't mean tan to the power negative one. It just means tan inverse. Okay, So um, that's the way it's written like that. So it's, it's still going to be... Um, yeah, so how do you do tan inverse on your calculator? Well, I'll just show you where the button is, and then uh, we'll do a calculation that uses it. So, okay, you notice if I go down to this area, I've got my tan button. Now, the next lesson, just to give you a little heads up, we're going to learn these two uh, functions, sine and cos. Uh, but where's tan inverse? So, usually, um, well, just about every calculator I've ever seen, uh, it's like the second function button of the tan. So. If I want to get tan inverse, I press second, as in second function, and you notice the button changed to tan inverse. Um, if I flip it back, it goes back to tan. Okay. Um, 
so let's uh, let's get this going. Let's see how it works. Okay, and here's the that symbol I talked to you earlier about theta. So that's the unknown angle. That's what we're trying to find. And we know this side is 12 units and this side is 5 units. Based on that ratio, well, we could get we could actually get the slope, right? The slope would be opposite over adjacent. The slope would be 5 twelfths. But we want to convert that slope into a into an an actual angle in degrees. And that's exactly what the tan inverse function does. It takes it takes a slope and changes it into an angle. Okay? So um, I'm going to start off the same way I did the other questions. So tan. Now this time I don't actually know the angle. The angle is unknown. It's we're using theta, so I use tan theta. Okay. Now that's going to be equal to so because theta is the angle. That's opposite over adjacent. So if you think about it from that perspective, that's my opposite. That's my adjacent. So it's going to be five over twelve. Okay, so how do you how do you get that by itself? A lot of people think, oh, don't you just divide both sides by tan? Uh, that that doesn't work. Tan isn't a number. Tan is a function. Okay, so tan is like a square root. Okay, so if I said the square root of x is equal to something, you wouldn't divide by square root. You do the inverse of square root. Okay, which would be squaring. And in this case, the inverse of tan is tan inverse. So I'm going to take the tan inverse of both sides. So I'm going to put brackets here. This looks probably look a little funky the first time you see it. So I'm taking the tan inverse of that, and that's going to be equal to the tan inverse of 5 twelfths. I'm just doing the same thing to both sides like we always do when we solve equations. I'm undoing the tan function with the tan inverse. Okay, and what happens here, this would be like squaring a square root or multiplying something you just divided, these two things just cancel right out. Okay, and I'm left with theta equals tan inverse 5 twelfths. Okay, so all we have to do is figure out how to get that and we've got our angle. So let's try that. This up. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is actually uh, do this. So we have to do 5 divided by 12 equals. Okay, so basically that's, you could write theta equals tan inverse of this whole thing, but again, why bother? Let's, let's just do everything in one step. So now what we have to do is do the tan inverse of that. So remember to get tan inverse, at least on this calculator, you do second function. And then the tan inverse is there, and we get our number. And this is going to be, I guess it doesn't say how to round it. Usually when you round angles, it's to the nearest degree, but let's let's show off a bit here. Let's do it to the nearest tenth of a degree, 22.6 degrees. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, now, uh, a lot of calculators, if you're looking for that tan inverse function, um, you can see it written underneath and it's going to be in a special color like it might be second function, it might be I don't know alternate or so just uh, just play around with it if you're if you got a hand-me-down calculator or you never kept the uh, user manual um, you can always look it up on the internet there's tons of manuals around for all the calculators um, so if you get to a dead end and you're not sure what to do, um, look up, grab the manual, hold on to that. It's probably a PDF file. Uh, one of the questions I always get as a math teacher is sometimes a calculator just gets hung up like a computer sometimes. You get some weird character showing up and it, it doesn't, the buttons don't work right. Um, usually on the back there's a reset button. Um, so that always works, but it, it's always a good idea to have the, the manual once you start getting into more complicated calculations like what we're learning today. Okay, um, so here's some homework questions. You can uh, try out your new 
uh, knowledge of the tan uh, ratio and how you can use it to find missing sides or unknown angles. Okay, and then uh, the next lesson we do, uh, we'll be looking at other special ratios. Uh, it'll be very familiar to what we did today. We're just looking at the other sides. Okay, so uh, have a try at that. If you're getting stuck on these questions, please join me on my office hours on Thursday this week. All right, guys, have a great day.